Greetings, rollercoaster fanatics! It has been a long time, but I am back. Of course, winter break, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos to try to keep up with the pace with stuff, but I am back and I've got a brand new segment to start off. So, Fan Facts the Right is done. Um, I basically don't know if I will remake something new off it, but there will no longer be any Fan Facts the Rides. We will now have fanatic reviews because that's basically what they are. And I would just rather have Colin Fanatic reviews since that's what they are. So already, um, if they go with the new Fanatic scores that I've been giving them, then they'll be in a playlist. But anyways, welcome. I'm going to start off with doing some reviewing some roller coasters that I did during the Christmas era. So holiday in the park and the Smoky Mountain Christmas for Dollywood and including the Alpine Coaster that I got to ride as well. Uh, so stay tuned for some of those Fanatic reviews as I'll start to be posting some of them. And then of course I got a lot of other coasters that I got to review. So anyways, they'll be happening every Tuesday. So hopefully Tuesday's just major day. So anyway, let's get started. We're going to talk about Roar at Six Flags America, the last Roar to remain. Let's begin. Alrighty, so Roar is made by the company GCI Great Coasters International. They're very famous for making wooden coasters. And this was a time when they were really starting to uh, step off from uh, that abomination called Wildcat. And they really are starting to branch off and do their own thing. And in 1998, they decided to do something new and fresh. And so they uh, went to Six Flags and two coasters were made. One came out, I believe, uh, 98, which we're talking about. The other one, which is no longer existing, I think came out in 99. Uh, but do not hold me to that. But 98, May the 2nd, is when uh, this coaster that we were talking about opened. Um, it is a twister wooden roller coaster. It has a height of 94.6 feet and a drop of 85 feet. It has a maximum speed of 50 and a half miles per hour and has a total duration of about a minute and a half. Uh, but excluding lift hill, it's about a minute, maybe a little bit less. Uh, so it's um, nice, strong uh, layout. It is themed to nothing, um, but what's kind of cool is your picture will have like a dinosaur uh, mouth kind of over it. So I guess that's what the theme is. Uh, besides that, they'll have some Snickers, advertisements it's six flags what do you expect so uh, overall this is a very strong roller coaster and definitely start GCI's consistent great woodies that they uh, start uh, building uh, as the years goes on um, unfortunately it does have its flaws and we're going to talk about that so of course you start out of the station does a lot of whininess to get to the lift hill that's a typical GCI it does a nice big drop and then it go and then this coaster is just a couple bank turns, um, airtime hills, um, and it just winds around itself, which is basically what Roar is famous for doing, and all the GCIs out there, that's what they're known for, um, and this one is solid, it has some solid things to it, uh, especially the first half, the bank turns are nice, the smoothness is consistent, uh, the airtime is there and not there. Uh, the one thing that does I do have a big complaint with, and it's very interesting that Six Flags still decides to keep these trains, is the, the PTC trains. These things, besides being rough, they really ruin the track. They will run through the track and make it uh, wear out, and they have to re uh, keep replenishing the track. And I just don't think PTC trains are meant for GCI coasters. I prefer the Millennium Flyer trains, but unfortunately, this coaster does not have those trains unfortunately which you can definitely feel uh, once we get to the second half where there is a little bit of roughness each time you dip down to come up for a bank or something like that definitely once you exit the tunnel um, then you definitely start feeling the roughness and that is a problem with this roller coaster but other than that it has some str it has really some strong bank turns the tunnel is really nice a nighttime ride is definitely rare but when you get the chance it is all out phenomenal and is overall a really great ride and i'm going to give roar at six flags america a c plus so there we go to start off the fanatic reviews i got roar it has got some solid points but it does lack the intensity and 
smoothness that you would find in a Millennium Flyer train or other GCIs like maybe White Lightning or Lightning Racer, but it did have some solid features. What do you think of Roar? If you have ridden it, comment below and let me know what you really think of this ride. Is it great? Is it not great? What are, you, what are your uh, positive thoughts about it? I want to know and whatever coaster you would like to see me review for Fanatic Reviews, let me know in the comments below and I will review it for you. Thank you all for watching and as always, Roller Coaster Fanatics, keep coasting.